Hello everybody, I'm Stephanie B from Career Makeover Academy. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there today and I apologize. Um, so instead of being there in person, I've gone ahead and created this video to show you how I use Beacon to create lead magnets. So obviously, this is Beacon. This is the home page of the website and you can scan through that at your leisure. What we're gonna do is get straight to business. I'm gonna go ahead and click log in and get into the application itself. So these are the lead magnets that I've created so far. I can show you one of these. We'll go with this, um, my favorite confidence videos, one that I created for interview confidence. And so um, just kind of looking at what's already here, you have your cover page, and then you can navigate to your information. And then you can navigate to the next few pages of your PDF. And I think this is only a three page doc. So the last page is um, basically a call to action that has the information about um, resources, which are my strategy sessions, my Facebook group, and to uh, book that free strategy session, there's a button available for them to click. Okay, so now that you've seen a demonstration of a lead magnet, let's go ahead and actually create one. I'm gonna go back here to the home page, and I'm going to go ahead and click new I'm gonna hit that button and it's gonna allow me three selections ebook checklist or resource guide so this is the blog post that I'm going to create the lead magnet for it is an article on three tips for creating consistent content I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab this URL and I'm going to make an ebook I'm going to say import blog content and I'm going to say yes you can click the no button to create a brand new version which is as clean that's not being pulled from the blog post itself but I just find this to be insanely easy now I'm just going to go ahead and paste my web address click the import button and it's showing me that it has imported the post itself now all I have to do is click the create publication post and pick my custom theme you obviously can modify the images in these and we're not going to do that for this instance I'm just going to see if I can find one that I like okay so I'll just do this one all I have to do is click on that. It'll start pulling that information in and the basic setup. You can just click on these. This is the first page. This is the ebook template. I can go ahead and make modifications to this as I see fit. I'm gonna just call it the tips for creating consistent content. Your amazing content. And obviously this is not the best copywriting. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I would actually make this significantly much more attractive to my audience. All right, so now we have this basic thing down here. We can change the, the image by clicking the image button and you can upload from your computer and they also have an image library that's available. And you can type in a selection. So if I just wanted to type in a blog post, or something oh there's somebody working on the laptop so I could you know click this if I wanted to it's from Pixabay so they're free and um, they should not get you sued I actually kind of like this image right now and I'm gonna go ahead to go to table of contents and then this is basically just giving you the links that go to the different areas that correspond over here on the sidebar and I can go to the introduction and as you can see obviously this is not my signature it just has some static information that you can modify about your key subjects what are the main benefits and then you can just modify these accordingly go to the about the author and then you just put in your about the author information just plug it into this template super easy chapter one you can actually go ahead and make modifications to this make it chapter one and then give a brief blurb about it and you can add as many chapters as you want by duplicating and then changing the name so let's go ahead and do that so I'll just duplicate the page and instead of chapter one copy what I do is go up here and type in chapter two and then it automatically updates this and I can drag it wherever I want it so obviously chapter one would be first chapter two would be second so I'm gonna go back here to the three tips for creating consistent content this is what actually pulled from my blog post and you'll see that it actually brings in all the links I have a link here that goes to another blog post within my blog and it actually bolds the headings and the titles let's see if go back here if you look introduction I have a video it obviously doesn't put the video in there it has planning to Tip number two, so um, tip number one, planning and headers. Tip number two is a title and then headers. It has all of the links that I have within it and it has a link here that goes back to the website. And it even actually pulls in some of the, the terms and private policy part and your support link. It's really great, it's really convenient. What I'm gonna do now is just, if you wanted to make modifications to this, you can as far as changes in colors, but we're not. We're gonna go to that next. So next what we're gonna do is click on the content tab and then that gives you information for the title, summary, and author, main text. 
So this is just the introduction information. If you deselect, it goes away. If you reselect, it puts it in there. And you can also set up to magnify images, which I don't have any images added in. You can add images by using this. If I wanted to add the video in that I had at the beginning of my article, which is watch the video, create consistent content, then I can just go ahead and click video, and then I can put the YouTube or Vimeo embed code or link, and it will automatically plop that in there so that I can get more traffic to my YouTube channel or Vimeo channel. So this is the second tab. We can click the advanced button, and then this gives you information on how to change direction. You can actually hide the company name, which I don't have it displaying on here. So, oops. Next, we're gonna move on to layout. And this is where you can put a background image. Let's go back to the first page here. So here's the first page. We have our background image of the lady making the glasses hands. And you can actually make modifications to how you would like for the text to display. So right now we have one column selected, but I can select box top, center, box center. Here's the middle stripe. You get the idea. They have angled, little, little jaunty angle there. You have a lot of angles that are set up here for you to make modifications and when you click through to the different pages by clicking this arrow over here it has the selections for background selections for each of these individual types of pages let's go back here and we can we have one column selected you can also also do side photo if I had a photo on here it would pop it up on the side and you can do stripe diagonal oops which has the title on a stripe I believe one column would be the best choice here's a call to action you also get these selections for the call to action page that are similar to the one for the cover. Let's say I don't like these colors. You have preset color schemes that you can select and you can customize your page colors to be your brand colors, which I'm not going to do right now because I know you have a lot of other things to see, but you can just put in your code here or you can select it here. You can um, do the slider or you can select it in this colored section where you can just move your little dot and select it as you see fit. All right, I'm gonna cancel out of there. And last but not least, we have fonts. So you can actually customize your page font and select this as sort of a standard. And I'm going to go ahead and go back. Or you can just select one of the available bitter. I love that. So let's say we'll go with notation. Personally, I don't like that, but this is just for demo. We have this set up. Let's go back through. Let's go back to pages. As you'll remember, you have all your pages listed in this pages tab. The very first page is your cover. The next is table of contents, which links directly to each of the pages. Your introduction which you obviously complete slap a nice little photo of yourself or something related to your business or your industry about the author same thing just kind of pop something in there complete these different sections or just copy something out from your about page or about me page on your website and you have your chapter divider page and then you have your content which is pulled directly from your blog post which is super nice so you're done creating your lead magnet and now what do you do with it right so what we're gonna do is generate PDF before I I forget I forgot to show you a couple things so we're gonna do is add a page and we're gonna do news and so you have content here and I do words blah 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 I am number I want to see like news of the day and then local fun stuff okay and then we'll put in, you know, our words down here. And you can just keep filling this in. So then you can have your news, kind of like a newsletter type thing. Also, we can add a checklist. So that's kind of fun. You can have like, you know, fun local stuff. And then, you know, here's your first one. It's like go to the park and ride a pony. Eat ice cream in the winter. Dance with a snowman whatever you want to do so you can just you know make these modifications and customize it to your abilities you also have bullet points um, you can add your links in their hyperlinks and you can add tables so we'll do well obviously insert table and so we'll do fun things for kids oops fun things for adults fun things for pets and then I wonder if you can do a check. You can do checklists within each of these columns, which I just found out while I was doing this with you guys. So that's pretty cool. So you can add in a new, where you go? Add in a row below, and you can just keep doing that. There's probably an easier way to add multiple rows in the one. 
I keep hitting tab because I'm so used to Excel slash Google Sheets. Um, thingy two, thingy three. I probably should have made this checklist. So whatever, just pretend I made those checklists. Okay, so I hope that that gives you a better idea of some of the things that are available. And what we're gonna do next is go ahead and generate our PDF. This would be like the worst lead magnet in the world. Click the generating button up here in the upper right hand corner. I wanna play the do, 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 Jeopardy theme. So I'm gonna view PDF and I now have a PDF available, right? So I'm actually gonna hit the save button just to save it. And then I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and you're gonna see that I have this three tips for creating consistent content that um, this is the one that we just created. And obviously I can download it or I can share it. But before we go with that, we're gonna look at some of these items down here. So let's say I wanted to rename it. All I have to do is click this and type in the new names great consistent content let's say I just thought it was too long so change the name next you can do is preview the web version which is kind of nice because I don't actually have it published yet so you can't do that yet we could duplicate it if you wanted to have something that was similar but slightly different you could duplicate that and change a few of the things up change the theme this is the cover page theme that we looked at before if I wanted to make a quick change to that let's say the one that I chose was three years old and it was looking a little dated I could update that and then bam new lead magnet that's much better looking than the previous version which is old and no one wanted it since I just created this and I haven't really shared it yet there's obviously no analytics so this one says there's no traffic data for this issue is the issue published it is not actually published and this says if so please check back shortly note if you shared the short version of the URL you can find your analytics here so if you click here you actually get to another page which would show you analytics and I'll show you something from a really old one that I actually converted these over to lead pages. That's another thing we'll talk about. If you download it, you can use lead pages or convert tree or whatever, and you can actually use your third party utility as opposed to sharing it directly through here, which is what I prefer to do. So I'll show you the content in a minute, but what I want to do first is show you how to do the publishing. This first item, enable lead capture. Once you click that, it gives you several options. The start is offer your lead magnet in exchange for someone's email address, and there's a video demo that you can watch. There's, I can also do a trigger, which you'll get some code you can put it on there and then you'll get this you can actually modify click the customize button or down arrow and then it'll give you like all the things that you can change you'll actually have this appear on your website and people can go ahead and click on this link and they'll be able to download it next you have the option for pop-up which the problem with this one I find is that you can't I don't like it to say name I like it to say first name so I never use I've never used this I always feel that people think it's weird when you ask for their home when they ask for just their name they're much much more likely to give you their information if it's just a first name people don't feel so much like you're gonna start spamming them and then this links to MailChimp I actually use ConvertKit for my email service provider so I have a trigger set up with Zapier that moves anything that comes from these which is moot point now because I believe I transferred everything over to lead pages you can select your provider and we have to set it up elsewhere you select your provider and then you have your information put your email subject you have your thank you page your delivery email and so when someone actually does make the selection and downloads it then it will send them this nice little thank you email another thing that they have which is nice is this embed code you just copy this and paste it into your website and you are basically done and then you go over here to the lead section and it shows you your leads so one thing that you can do in this publishing section is get the share link we just click it and you get your link you can choose your URL and I set mine up to just be career dash makeover dash Academy share setting is to enable the download to save social media share buttons disable web version display full screen width and you can also put in your Facebook pixel for tracking and you can do retargeting through Facebook ads that way and you have your search engine settings you can prevent search engines from indexing this publication and you can hide a company name in the title bar and then you have these text fields where you can put the meta title meta keywords and meta description and before you do your publishing and so that's kind of nice if you just want to have something as a share link and you can put it like if you have Squarespace you can just create a cover page and then put the share link behind it once you've captured their con their email address that way you can sort of not use lead pages but it might present some problems later on down the road if you're trying to do retargeting or if you want to segment your list the last one on here is download and obviously you click that and it downloads it to your to your desktop or laptop and I've already downloaded it so I'm not going to bother doing that again I'll go ahead and click the beacon and go back okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click this one and see if 
If you go to enable lead capture and then go to leads, it should tell you all the people who've actually signed up for your lead magnet. Here's one, my LinkedIn 101 checklist that people have actually signed up for. And unfortunately, I have to go in and manually move these over. So that's one of the reasons that I decided not to use the functionality native to Beacon and just to capture that to download the lead magnet and then upload it as a downloadable through lead pages or convert tree or something like that because it was just too many steps and I ain't got time for that. I hope that this was helpful in showing you how I use Beacon to create lead magnets. I'll just go ahead and show you one that I've actually used for people and this is the most generic cover page in the world. This is just a quick checklist that summarizes the content of another blog post that I created and it took me probably about 10 to 15 minutes to make. I'll say 20 but I'm pretty sure it was 10 to 15 minutes and literally just pulled it in and then I dumped it into a checklist. That was it. I just took the highlighted points, put them into this checklist, and I mean, I don't know about you, but it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty, it has to be functional, and I can always go back in and make modifications later on, but I would rather maximize my output and minimize the amount of time it takes to create things. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and send me something. Actually, just tag me in the original post for this section, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Hope you have a wonderful day, and just enjoy all the other great content you're getting from these guys. Hope your businesses thrive and that you have a wonderful 2018. Thanks and have a good one. Bye.